Guys, uh, like we said last time, we looked at how to do business in Africa uh, as a whole, and today we'll be focusing on Eastern Africa. Now, we'll be breaking down African culture um, in five parts, okay? East, South, Central, West, and Northern Africa, yes? Now, African people kind of like all look alike, yes? Yeah. Maybe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you see, in Africa you have several countries, but more importantly, many, many, many nationalities, ethnicities, okay? How many? Thousands. How many thousands? Maybe tens, hundreds of thousands. Why? Mm. Because each African country has at least 10 to 20 different ethnicities. And each one of them has its own language, its own culture. And the color of the skin itself really cannot tell or help you tell what kind of people they are. Because each people is different, okay? Um, people in Beijing are very different from people in Shanghai, yes? Although, you know, we're all Chinese, but still you can see some major differences. And if you want to do business well with each one of them, you need to understand those differences, yes? Same thing for Africans. So, what are we going to see today? Uh, first of all, we look at the different peoples of Africa. This thing. Thank you very much, adorable. Okay, so we'll, we'll be looking at the different peoples of Africa. And afterwards, we'll look at the different kingdoms of Africa. Although Africa was colonized, before colonization, there were existing kingdoms and emperor, uh, empires, actually. Uh, we look at Ethiopia as a special case in Africa. Um, many people understand that Ethiopia is an interesting African country, yes? But their history is quite different from the ones of other African nations. Now, um, Eastern Africans, we look at them as in uh, herding people, okay? People who keep livestock. And we'll see how this defines who they are, okay? And then we'll look at their characteristics. Um, just like you could say, you know, Beijing people are uh, very warm and open minded and, you know, welcoming to foreigners and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then we'll look at the challenges because uh, it's a good thing to discuss the good parts, yes, of a people. But when you want to do business with that, you need to understand what can be difficult and how to overcome those difficulties. And from this analysis, we look at how to strategically approach and do business with them, okay? Just like we did generally for Africans. But the thing is, um, each people is different. So we can generalize, but sometimes we need to look into it a bit deeper, yes? And finally, as always, some practice, okay? Yeah? <clears throat> Mm. So, welcome to the uh, to this introduction to African culture, uh, specifically Eastern Africa today, okay? Good. Now, um, this is a map representing the different peoples of Africa, okay? Now, we've said that there are thousands of them, but those thousands can be divided into, I'd say, three major groups. And this is important to understand how, you know, it shapes their minds, okay? Now, the first ones, I would say, are these ones. These two can be combined, actually, okay? Then you have the northern part of Africa, which, you know, are composed of a different kind of people. And then you have the, you know, uh, eastern, I mean, along the line, Nile River, and then eastern part of Africa. They do share similarities, okay? So three major kinds of people. The ones from the west, center, south, the ones in the north, and the ones around the Nile River, and a bit towards the eastern part of Africa. Now, Africa is very diverse, like we've said.
like sometimes when you go from one uh, format to the other, there are some changes. Apologies for this. Okay, yes. So, very diverse. So Africa is very diverse, okay? You have uh, several thousands, tens of thousands of different cultures, okay? And we can divide these cultures into three main groups. Number one, they're called the Bantu people. We discussed this during the first class, okay? They're, I mean, Bantu people are like the majority of Africans, roughly 80% of Africans. Uh, Bantu are the black Africans, okay? Uh, most of black Africans are actually ba uh, Bantu, okay? Then you have the uh, Nilotic people. What does that mean? People who lived along the Nile River and, you know, southern towards the eastern part of Africa, okay? They're also black, but they're, they have some different characteristics, okay? Physically, basically, they will tend to be very tall, okay, and very thin. So you'll find that, you know, Africans come in different shapes and colors, okay? You have, like, very light skin, tall and thin, you'll find them around Ethiopia. Uh, tall, thin, but very dark, Sudan, okay? And then, you <laughs> and then you go down like this, but usually those people tend to be taller and thinner, okay, than uh, the average, okay? Now, the uh, Maghrebins, okay, they account for, say, 20%, okay, 20% of the African population. And these are the white Africans, okay, the white Africans that you find in the north of Africa. They are the Maghrebins. And so if you look carefully here, the Bantus are usually here, okay, around here, this region, west. Central and Southern Africa. The Maghrebins are all in the north, okay? Berbers on that side and Arabic on this side. Why? Because, you know, this part is the Middle East, basically, mm -hmm. okay? And then you have the Nilotics, which are here and can go down a little bit towards the source of the Nile, which is the, uh, like, Great Lake region, okay? And specifically, the Maghrebins are white, or, you know, quite Caucasian looking to a certain extent, but they are Africans, okay? They've always been there, and there's no problem. Uh, the Bantu are dark skinned, okay? You can find in the west of Africa very, very tall, super strong <laughs> kind of Africans, you know? Like uh, American basketball player types, okay? Exactly. Those mostly come from West Africa. So all of these basketball players that you see in America, uh, in America who are very, very strong and, you know, monstrous, okay? They mostly come from West Africa. Because back in the days, uh, the Westerners would come and ca capture black people mostly from there, okay? Okay. And so uh, you do find, like, also darker but maybe shorter, um, like, like me and a bit shorter, okay? They're still Bantu, but... They mostly live in the central part of Africa. And so the ones in the south, they're in between, in a way. Okay? And it's been a bit of like a mixture uh, of blood among you know, different kinds. And so if you see one African guy, you can actually tell. If you've seen a few Africans and you know that, oh, people from that country and that country are like this, you can actually tell you know, instantly where they come from, just from this. Okay? Mm -hmm. And from this, you can also understand that their culture will be different, okay? So here, uh, we've seen Bantus in the past, okay? We've seen that Bantus are defined by uh, their, I mean, Africans in general are defined by their uh, religious belief, okay? Which is the foundation of their culture. And the Bantus actually believe in what we call Ubuntu. We've seen this before, but I'm just going to, uh, you know, go through it very briefly. Um, 
belong to. And that's important to actually understand the Eastern Africans, because the Eastern Africans will tend to not really share a uh, Bantu culture basis. And this is one way to really understand that, okay? So the idea is that Bantus, okay, it's the name of the people. And what it means basically is the plural of the word Mutu, okay? And this word, if you remember, means one's head, okay? So Mutu technically literally means a head, okay? And why it means the head? It means that this people defined itself as using one's head, one's mind, or you could say the spirit to control or direct their behaviors. And the mind and the spirit basically is the part which you cannot see of a person, okay? And people, uh, Bantu people used to believe that this part was directly connected and given by God. And so there's this idea within Bantu philosophy that everyone, all people, all Bantu, all Maghrebins, all Europeans, all Asians, are actually children of God. And so, as a human being, okay, because Mutu or Bantu means the head, but also means a human. A human being actually is defined by how he uses his spirit to connect to God and act like a God on earth. This is opposite to a very important, hey, this is opposite to a very important concept, which is the concept of uh, Nyama. Mm -hmm. So, Mutu and Nyama are two opposite concepts within African Bantu philosophy. So, these concepts are completely opposite. And the word Nyama. Yeah, the word nyama actually means two things. So, mutu means head and people, or person, okay? Nyama means the flesh. You know, like meat, flesh. If you go to Africa and you say, uh, I want to eat nyama, it means you want to eat some meat. Do you understand that? So, nyama means meat, it means the flesh. But by extension, it actually means animal. Like the word, like Chinese word, dongwu, okay? Nyama means dongwu, okay? And the point is, the Bantu people uh, strive uh, through their lives to behave like divine beings as opposed to animals. And what defines this is what you decide to use to control your behavior. Are you going to follow your mind, which comes from God? Or are you going to follow your body, which comes from the earth? And this, you know, you can always see this duality in human society. One example, okay? You have love which is a spiritual kind of feeling, yes? As opposed to lust, which is a basic physical feeling, okay? For instance, I could say, um, you know, it's fine, but, you know, I could say, I love you, okay? Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> what it means <laughs> is that I have this feeling towards you that enables me to strive for your happiness without asking anything in return, okay? <clears throat> I love you. But I could also say, oh, can you put your hands there? On the table. I could also say, I have, it's just a joke, okay? I have lust for you, okay? Lust, do you understand what lust is? 
So I can love him, but I can also have lust for him. I'm using you so that I don't use a female and make her feel embarrassed, okay? Okay. <laughs> so lust in this case is a carnal desire, okay? And when people are guided by their carnal desires, eventually they behave like animals. And the entire philosophy of like 80 to 90% of Africans is to try really, really hard to never behave like an animal and always behave like a like, like flesh and blood spiritual being. And from this perspective, you have the understanding of how people are supposed to behave uh, with each other, okay? So from this thing, if we all are the children of God, okay, then it means that you are my sister. And if you are my sister, then I owe to, how do you behave towards your siblings? Siblings. siblings like brothers and sisters. How do you behave towards a sibling? A sibling, like a, a brother or a sister. Yes. Yes, how do you behave towards siblings? I know that most of us are single children, but you know, how do you behave towards your cousins or even like a very, very close friend? Hmm? You look after them, great. You look after them, you take care of them. You share what you have with them, okay? You protect them, yes? And then you always keep together, always take care of each other, always love each other. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. If everyone is a sibling on earth, then it means that it is our duty to take care of everyone. And this is from this basis that we saw last time, well, during the first class, that African culture is communist per nature. Because, you know, we ought to share with everyone and we ought to take care of everyone. And in fact, you know, everything belongs to everyone. Do you understand? In a way. So this is where, basically, this whole concept of Ubuntu comes from. Ubuntu would be like the philosophy or the religion of most of these Bantu people. So Ubuntu is like the philosophy, the religion, okay? There you go. That they follow. This is crucial to understand African people. This is very crucial to understand African people. Because from this, you can understand why they behave the way they do. Why? Because if in their minds, everyone is a brother, everyone is a sister, and we ought to have real family feelings and relationships towards other people, then that makes many things not okay. It makes being selfish not okay. African people fundamentally like to share. Why? Well, that's what you do with your siblings, isn't it? Yes? Not sharing with a sibling is wrong, completely wrong. African people are very, very friendly towards strangers. Why? Because a stranger is not a stranger. A stranger is a sibling who just came from afar. Imagine your cousin that you never see decides to stop by, you know, come to Beijing. What do you do? You make sure that, you know, their stay will be memorable and very, very happy. Why? There's, you know, their family. This is how Africans treat foreigners. Foreigners in many African languages does not exist. There's no such word as foreigner. In African languages. The word for foreigner in African languages is guest. There's no word for foreigner in many African languages. Because what is a foreigner? <laughs> no, a foreigner or a stranger is just a cousin or a brother to be. Do you understand? So this is important to understand Eastern Africans. Okay? Mm, Maghrebins will see this later. Their core philosophy right now and for the past 800 years, give or take, is like people from the north of Africa. What's their philosophy? The basis of you know their culture. We'll see this later, but it's Islam, you know, Muslim re uh, religion. Yes, yeah, most of them are Muslims, and this is important to understand in order to understand that. You understand? And many people in West Africa are also Muslims, okay? So all of this, you know, when you take Ubuntu and you add layers of different, say, religions, then you can 
slowly kind of like grasp how these people are and how to deal with that. Okay? Okay. So this is important to understand, the concept of Ubuntu and what it means and the fact that most Africans share that concept as the basis of their philosophy. It's like saying Chinese people, at the, as uh, the basis of your philosophy, you all share Confucianism. The values given by Konzo, yes, Confucius. It's the same thing. Okay? Okay. So, with this. Okay, let's see if this works now. Ah, great. Okay, so, um, in order to create what? In order to create a country, you need communities. In order to create communities, you need certain values that connect people. Okay? The source of Ubuntu actually is West Africa. Why? Because you know the initial like you know bomb to black Africans come from West Africa and migrated in to Africa. Okay? So if you want to look for the source of Ubuntu, it's in West Africa. And you find that the places where Ubuntu is the strongest is the other places where the largest, most prosperous empires have existed in Africa. We'll see this more when we'll discuss Western Africa. But then you find that as you go down to the center, you know, the center is like a tropical forest and everything, but there are, there were kingdoms, important ones actually. And then in the east here, of course you know Egypt, okay? But Let's say, when was it? Uh, 2,000 plus years ago, or 1,000 plus years ago, you had one in the north of Africa, one empire called uh, Carthaginian Empire. It's important to know because this empire has been fighting with the Roman Empire for centuries, and eventually the Romans defeated them. Do you understand? When we look at maps, and we see that all of North Africa belonged to Rome, okay? The Roman Empire. It's because Rome defeated Carthage and took over their land. So, you know, so this was a very powerful empire. But, you know, they lost, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> now, Egypt, we know about it, of course. But there's another thing that we do not know, which is the kingdom of Aksum. The kingdom of Aksum started, like, in 100 BC, okay? And we'll see why it's critical. From 100 BC up until the 20th uh, century, actually, okay? It's one of the longest lasting kingdoms in Africa. And here we have, in Central Africa, three main kingdoms, okay? You have the Luba Empire, not the state, Luba Empire. And the Luba people actually gave birth to the Lunda Empire and also to the Congo Kingdom. Okay, it's, we can discuss this a bit more, okay? Why? Because of the values of the culture of that one people, of that group of people. You need culture to create society, do you understand? You need a culture that promotes <coughs> communities, and from those communities promotes order to build a state. And we've seen it's difficult in a post-scarcity society. And then, in the South, you had the great kingdom of the great empire of Great Zimbabwe. The empire of Great Zimbabwe. Like the small Zimbabwe actually was an empire before. Yeah. So this is uh, for us to see. But I am not uh, being hateful or racist, but I need you to see that sadly there is no major. Eastern African state or pre-colonial kingdom or empire recorded. There were smaller kingdoms, you understand, but a small kingdom at the time was a, like, a, like a small city, you know what I mean, like a city-state, but not that big. And there is a reason for that, and this reason must be understood to really grasp how Eastern Africans actually are. Okay, so with this, it's okay 